Hi, everyone, and welcome to our session about how to protect Kubernetes environments and how to have peace of mind, both for the backup and IT ops people, as well as the Kubernetes administrators and developers. My name is Efri Natal Shai. I'm part of the product management team for Dell EMC Power Protect, and I'm going to walk you through what we're doing architecturally, as well as demonstrate this and how you can actually do it yourself. So you've seen similar slides from Pat Gelsinger and others. This is a common situation that our organization and our customers are having. On the one side, you have the IT ops and the backup admins, and they want to have things in order. When they move things into production, they need to have compliance. They have to comply with regulations. They need to have reporting. They want to manage backup policies correctly for everything that they are protecting. On the other hand, you have the Kubernetes admins and the developers, and I had to use a politically correct slide here. They just want to run and they want to deploy what they have. Probably they'll say, give me a volume, uh, and that would be claiming uh, persistent volumes, but once they have it, they want to deploy the application and they want to run. They typically don't want to care too much about backup, compliance. They know they, they need to, but they want the IT people to take care of that. So we're bringing a solution that helps both of these people live in peace together uh, with one and each other. What we're bringing is enterprise-grade data protection solution named PowerProtect that allows you to manage VMs, applications, and containers from the same place. It also allows the Kubernetes admins and the DevOps to be able to do what they need from the interfaces that they have using Kubernetes APIs and Kube Control, and we'll see that in a second. And we're doing that with co collaboration with Valero. Valero is the open source project from VMware. Uh, after the acquisition of uh, Heptio, the project named Arc was renamed to Valero. And uh, Valero is very known in the uh, Kubernetes community as the way to backup uh, containerized environment. We're working with the Valero team to bring you an enterprise level on-prem and cloud solution to your environments. So Power Protect in general is one stack of data protection and data management solution that we announced at Dell Technologies in April. And we are now, uh, it is now available for you. Power Protect is one stack of software that allows you data protection for all of your needs, whether it's backup and recovery, business continuity, disaster recovery, cyber recovery, uh, data management and analytics. We want to bring all of the use cases into one place, manageable from one single stack. And you, we want to enable you to consume it either as a standalone software or as a part of an integrated appliance or in the future as a service. And what we're doing is we're bringing things very quickly, one release every quarter so we can innovate and we can bring new functionalities and experiment with our customers to see in these fast-pacing environments like Kubernetes how you are going to protect them. When it comes to Kubernetes data protection, we have three pillars that we want to allow our customers to work with. The first one is the central management aspect. We want the backup admin to have one place where they can discover assets, whether they are VMs or applications or containers. We want them to be able to define policies scheduling backups once every couple of hours, retain them for a decent amount of time, um, decommission them, all of that done from the same place with the same user experience. And that is critical for our customers. They are telling us we need enterprise GUI to manage that. We need REST APIs to put, put it inside our uh, environments, but we want one place for all of that. And we want reporting and we want compliance and governance and SLAs enforced from the same place. Second thing is flexibility. Most of our customers use data domain and they appreciate data domain or the new announced X400, which is the integrated appliance with uh, the software and the backup target in one place. Other customers are telling us we want to backup to S3. S3 is where we store our uh, targets. We have customers that are telling us we just want to protect PVCs. Others want to protect at the higher level, at the namespace level. We have customers that are working on-prem and customers that want on-prem and public cloud. There are a lot of varieties of distributions for Kubernetes, a lot of varieties for 
types of volumes that uh, you have, and we want to allow our customers the, that flexibility of heterogeneous environment uh, data protection. The third pil pillar that uh, instructs us is that we want to build a solution that is specifically architected for Kubernetes as far as the data path and the control path. So we know that containerized environments are not just VMs. We know that pods are coming and, knowing, and going. We know that the management tools for Kubernetes are different. So we want to allow a solution that scales ups and downs uh, as necessary and is manageable from the right place. And I'll go very quickly into the architecture that uh, is guiding us when we build a solution. Basically, we have three persons that are touching the system. The first one is the backup admin and the RT ops, and they're using PowerProtect, and they want that all policy management and governance and everything from their tool. Then we have the Kubernetes admins, and they want to use group control, and they want to use CRDs, and they want to use the YAML files to uh, describe what they're doing, and they want to annotate uh, their pods and their namespaces and their PVCs to say, this is a gold policy, this is what I'm going to use. And then we are at VMworld, uh, there are the VMware admins, and that can be either the vSphere admins or with a new announcement of Tanzu, you have Tanzu mission control, and you'll have multi-cloud management uh, of multiple Kubernetes clusters and you want data protection for these environments through the VMware tools. So you have multiple control points and multiple people trying to manage things. I will not go into the details of the exact architecture, but as you can see, we are building something that is specific for Kubernetes. We are deploying our own PowerProtect namespace. We are working with Valero, so you have the Valero namespace taking care of part of the protection, as well as PowerProtect taking care of other parts of the protection. And we are capable of backing that up into our well-known data, uh, data domain, which has great deduplication and economics uh, as far as backup targets are concerned. So overall, you have an, uh, an architecture that allows everybody to manage things from the place they know and they like. And we give everybody the control that they would have uh, in their environment. And with that, I'll turn to the demo and you'll be able to see uh, how we're actually implementing that. So this is the, data protect, uh, the PowerProtect dashboard. As you can expect, this is an enterprise grade dashboard that shows you what jobs are running, what things failed, uh, SLA compliance and, uh, and all of that. And we'll just go into the infrastructure part and look at the asset sources that we have. So typically you would have vCenters and, and other assets that we connect to and discover and manage. And we now add Kubernetes clusters into that mix. So we're going to add another Kubernetes cluster to the asset sources that PowerProtect has, we are connecting to a demo cluster. We will verify the credentials. And now we have that manageable by PowerProtect. So we discover things, we discover the version, the, we periodically examine what's happening in the cluster. Uh, you'll see that we're discovering the PVCs in that system, and then we're going to use that to uh, protect them. In terms of the storage targets, uh, here you can see data domains. We have a couple of DDVEs, virtual editions of data domains. And that would be the initial target that we uh, want to protect the data into. The data would be deduplicated at the source and at the target, so you get great efficiency of uh, data protection here. Uh, in the future, we're also going to include S3 compatible storage, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud. So the next thing, uh, as a data protection admin, I want to do is I want to add a policy. So I already have a couple of policies uh, and for VMs, and I'm going to add another policy. This is the Kubernetes Gold policy. This is the Kubernetes PVC policy. And I'm use, going to use crash consistency. And here are the list of the PVCs that the system discovered for me. I have five PVCs in that demo I'm going to back up the first one using that policy. Uh, they're running on Extreme.io software, um, storage, sorry. So I'm just going to click that one. And I'm going to click next. I skipped a couple of steps where you actually define the scheduler. You can see here that I have defined that gold policy to run on an hourly basis, keep the data for 60 days. You can define very sophisticated 
scheduling policies and Power Protect takes care of triggering these policies and, and run them. So now I have a new policy and I go to my uh, DevOps console and I'm going to do some damage. I'm going to delete that PVC and surprise, surprise, it is deleted. Uh, if I now understand what I did and I just want to verify, look at the PVCs, yeah, I had f five, now I have four, and that's not good. So I'm going to actually use a CRD that PowerProtect created in order to restore that file. So you can see the resource here, and I'm going to apply that, and that is going to trigger a PowerProtect restore operation where that copy is going to be brought from data domain and now if I do a get PVCs, I have everything back in my system and I have five volumes again. So that's my DevOps view. And I'm good there. If I now go back to my GUI, then I can also look at the assets again. And now I have the PVC there restored. So overall, I can do that from the GUI. I can do that from Cube Control. I can have control for the backup admin and I can have control from uh, the Kubernetes cluster for those who would like to do that. So overall, a very unique and um, um, groundbreaking technology to allow you protection at the Kubernetes resource with ability to do things at the enterprise level and at the DevOps level. Thank you very much. If you have questions, I'm here.